Good morning everybody, it is Jude Lennon here with Little Lamb Tales and obviously I've got Lammy with me this morning and our special guest this morning is a dragon and that's because tomorrow it is St George's Day and he is the patron saint of England which is where I live which is part of the United Kingdom and um, it's the main story about St George is that he slayed a dragon. So I thought that today would be a really good opportunity to tell some fabulous, exciting adventures involving dragons. Now, did you know, just before we start, that in the UK there are four different main countries and we've all got our own saints. So England's is St George, and we celebrate that on April the 23rd. Ireland's is St Patrick, we've just celebrated that in March on the 17th. Wales is St David's, we celebrate that at the beginning of March, on the 1st of March, and St Andrew is Scotland's, and we celebrate that on the 30th of November. So we're very lucky to have lots of lovely saints looking over the United Kingdom for us. There we go. Dragon, you sit there now, behave yourself, we'll have none of this breathing fire in the story, thank you very much. And it also, I just thought I'd tell you as well that St George is not only the patron saint of England, he's a very busy saint, he's also the saint of Aragon, Catalonia, they're both in Spain, Ethiopia, Georgia, which is who he's named after, Greece, Lithuania, Palestine, Portugal and Russia. He's a very, very busy saint indeed. Okay, so we've got lots of stories in the bag today all about dragons. So before we start, I'll just show you how Lammy's dressed today. As you can see, he's come dressed as a knight himself. He's got his sword, he's got his cape, he's ready for adventure. Are we ready to do our morning song then? Come on then, Lammy. If you know it, you can join in. It's really easy. Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? How are you today? If you're feeling good, give me a wave. Some people already have already, that's brilliant. If you're feeling ready for some stories about dragons, wave your sword in the air, brilliant. And if you're ready to see what's in the bag, give me a smile. Right then, here we go. So I've got three stories in here today, all about dragons. One is about St George. One is about a misunderstood dragon. And one is a retelling of a story that I wrote about a dragon. Here we go, what's coming out first? Let's see. Oh, it's the story of St George. Here we go. Now, this story happened a long time ago, and it's actually what we call a myth or a legend. So bits of it might be true, but bits of it have probably been made up because it makes a good story. Here we go. If you know how the beginning of my story start when they're set a long time ago, let's go. Long, 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 all together now, long ago, far, far away from here in a country not very far from where a certain George was with his horse, there was a kingdom. And in that kingdom there was a king and he had many subjects and a beautiful daughter. But oh dear, in that kingdom there was a dragon, a fierce fire breathing dragon. And that dragon kept sneaking into the town and gobbling up the people. It was very, very sad. And the king got most distressed. He had to save the people. That was his job. He was the king. He had to look after them. He thought what he could do. He needed to get rid of the dragon. Especially because the dragon had started to come near the castle. And he was very worried that he might actually take the princess. And oh dear, one night, that's exactly what happened. The dragon crept in to the town, up to the castle, and he stole the princess from her bed and took her back to his cave in the middle of the forest. The king was distraught. Oh no, he said, my princess has gone. What can I possibly do? He sent out a message far and wide for lots of knights to come. Please come and help, he said. George heard about this and thought, hmm, I'm sure there's something I could do. He got his sword and he also had a lance, which is a very, very, very long pointy weapon. And he got on his horse and off he rode. Are you ready to run? Let's go. He rode and he rode and he rode until he came to the castle. 
and he came and he said, Your Majesty, I believe you need some help. Oh yes, please, said the king, you've got to help. The dragon has come in the night and has taken my daughter, the princess. Please, please, say that you can save her. Where is this dragon's lair? Said, the, the, uh, said George. In the middle of the forest. Please be careful, he's vicious. Hmm, we'll see about that. George got back on his horse. Are we ready? And he set off to the forest. When he got there, he got off his horse and he carried on in, on foot. His lance took on one arm and his sword in his hand. He crept through the forest. Let's go. Until he saw the cave. That must be where the dragon is. He crept to the entrance. There was a beautiful tree not far from the entrance. I wonder what that's there for. I know, I'll leave my lance under there. So he left his lance under the tree and carried on towards the cave. <gasps> he crept inside and he suddenly heard the most horrendous snoring he'd ever, ever heard. He's ready to snore really loudly like a dragon would. <sighs> Quick as a flash, he got his sword and he thought, this is my chance, I'll get the dragon, but... Just as he went to stab the dragon with his sword, the dragon woke up. Rawr! Let's hear you, everybody. Rawr! The dragon roared and burst of flame. George ducked and he ducked out of the way and he came out of the cave and he whirled his sword around his head. Let's do that. And he slashed and he slashed, but he could not get near the dragon. The dragon kept breathing fire. Let's go. And in the end... George was exhausted. He rolled under the tree where his lance was and he didn't know. But the tree was magic and all the branches fell to the ground and made a safe little place for him inside. And he lay there and he got his breath back. And eventually, when he felt strong again, he picked up his lance. I'm ready, he said. And he came out from under the tree. The dragon was waiting and he sniffed mm. and he got ready to breathe his fire once more. But George got his lance, his long pointy weapon, and he ran and he prodded the dragon in between two of his scales and it went straight through to the dragon's heart and the dragon fell on the floor, dead. <sighs> Phew, said George, that was close. And he crept back out of the wood and onto his horse and rode back to the castle. Let's go. And when he got there, the king said, did you do it? Yes, he said, I've done it. And here, your princess is absolutely fine. She's safe. I found her at the back of the cave. The king was delighted. I tell you what, George, because you've been so brave and so gallant and you saved the princess, would you maybe like to marry her? Well, that's really kind of you, said George. And she's lovely, but I'm actually going to spend the rest of my days looking for other dragons and other people that I can help. But thank you very much for the offer. And he got back on his horse and off he rode. And he was very brave for the rest of his life. And that is why England and lots of other countries chose brave, fierce, gallant, victorious St George to be their special saint. Well done, everybody. Give yourselves a clap. I hope you all roared. I thought it would be brilliant to have heard you all. Right then, Lammy, you did a good job guarding the sword there. Let's see what else is coming out of the bag. Mm. Oh, here we go. Ah, right. Now, this story is called The Misunderstood Dragon because in a lot of stories, dragons are always the bad guys. And actually, sometimes they're just a bit misunderstood. Here we go. There was a princess long ago. She was kind and beautiful. Her name was Jo. She lived in a land called Abermale. Let me tell you about her tale. Princess Jo lived in a beautiful castle right by the edge of a wonderful forest. She had lots and lots of lovely things to play with. Toys and building and she loved to climb trees and make dens and all kinds of exciting things. But the one thing that Joe didn't really have was anyone to play with. She was actually a little bit lonely. And she'd sit in her beautiful room looking out across her land. <sighs> Just wish I had someone to play with. 
maybe someone I could build a tower with or climb a tree with or make a den with. It would be so much more fun than just sitting here by myself. And she sat by the window and she looked. <sighs> she was actually fed up. As she sat there, she suddenly heard a bit of a noise. What was that? And it was a roaring. Can you roar? Rawr! What on earth's that? said Joe. I've never heard that before. Rawr! I better go and look. So she came down the stairs, she got on her horse and she rode to the forest. Let's go. And when she got to the forest, she looked everywhere for the noise. She looked up. Let's look up into the trees. She looked this way. She looked this way. She looked round the back of the tree. She looked under the bushes. There was nothing that could make such a noise. Just as she was about to leave the forest, she noticed on one of the trees some really big claw marks. Ooh. Ooh. They look like they might belong to something fierce. Maybe a dragon. Princess Jo looked some more and she looked on at all the other trees that were near there were full of these slash marks, claw marks. Definitely a dragon, she said. I'll have to come back tomorrow and look properly. And she rode back to her castle. <laughs> that night she sat there in her room and she thought of a plan. Right, what do I need to catch a dragon? And she made a list. She wrote it down. A net. My horse. Some snacks to tempt the dragon out of the cave. And the next day she got her net and she got her horse and she got some snacks to tempt the dragon out of the cave. And then she rode back into the forest. Let's go. This time she went even deeper into the forest until she came to a part of the forest she'd never been to before. The trees grew really closely to each other and she had to squeeze through them. She had her net and her bag of snacks. Let's go. And once she got through the trees, there was a cave and she crept to the cave and she went, I wonder if this is where the dragon lives. She got hold of her net and the bag of snacks and she tiptoed bravely into the cave. <gasps> oh, goodness me, said a voice. What are you doing in my house? Get out, get out. Um, who are you? <gasps> I'm a dragon. A dragon? Well, you're supposed to be brave and fierce. Come out. <gasps> That's the problem. How many things were fierce and no good? I just want a friend to play with and I'm lonely. Are you? said Joe. Well, guess what? So am I. Come out of the cave so I can see you. And the dragon came out of the cave with big wings. Show me those big wings. Long claws and a really long tail. Ah, you look cute. <laughs> you think I look cute? Everybody thinks I'm fierce and people keep trying to kill me and catch me. You've got a net. Please don't try and catch me. I don't like it. I just want a friend. <laughs> and the dragon started to cry. Big, big dragon tears. They're purple. Did you know that? Purple tears dripping down the end of his face. I don't want to catch you in a net. I want to be friends with you. You want to be friends? Yes, I've got nobody to play with either. It's really, really boring in the castle. I've got lots of toys and games, but nobody to play them with. Do you want to come back with me? Oh, that would be great. Thank you. And so the princess hopped onto the dragon's back and they flew. Can you use your wings? And they flew and they flew and they flew back to the castle. Oh, this is brilliant, said Jo. What do you think we should do now? Well, I think the best thing for us to do be to play a game. Oh yes, said Princess Jo, let's do that. And so we've come to the end of our tale. Princess Jo and the dragon lived happily ever after, playing games, making dens and climbing trees. The end. Give yourselves a clap. Fantastic. Well done, everybody. Right then, we've got one more dragon story. Here we go. Ah, here we go. Now, this is the dragon from my book, The Dragon of Allerton Oak. I'm not going to read this to you. I'm actually just going to tell the story to you. OK, so here we go. Long ago, in the middle of Coldstones Park, there was a mighty oak tree 
It had stood there for many, many years and it was used as a meeting place by all of the animals. Every week they would gather there and they would meet with the wisest creature of all, Luna the owl. Every week Luna would leave her tree, circle around the ancient stones and fly in to speak to the animals' worries and questions. One day, a terrifying roaring sound filled the sky. Can you roar for me? Rawr! Looking up, the animals saw something that filled them with dread. A dragon. A huge, red, fire-breathing dragon heading straight for their tree. With an almighty roar, rawr! the dragon landed with a thud next to the tree. Hmm... This looks like the perfect place for my new lair, said the dragon. <gasps> the animals were horrified. The tree was for everyone to share. Squirrel cleared his throat. He was a bit nervous. Um, excuse me, dragon. Well, welcome to our park. Um, are you looking for a tree to make it a lair in? We can help you find one that's just as good as this. No. Said the dragon, I've made up my mind. I'm making my lair in this mighty oak tree. The thing is, said Hedgehog, um, this tree's for everyone. We all share it, but there's lots of other trees that are just as good as this one that we could maybe let you have. No, roared the dragon. I'm having this one. And he flew up to the topmost branches and started to make a nest for himself. The animals didn't know what to do. They thought the best thing would be to speak to Luna. They scampered off, let's go. They scampered and scampered and scampered until they got to Luna's tree. Squirrel ran up and knocked on the door. Please Luna, come quickly. There's a dragon and he's in the oak tree and he says he won't share it with anybody and, and, he's, and he's, he's gonna eat us, I think. We'll see about that, said Luna. She fluffed up her feathers. Can you fluff up your feathers? And she spread her wings, let's see them. And she flew down to speak to the dragon. Mr. Dragon, said Luna, you are very welcome to share our oak tree, but you must not make your lair there. It's for us all. We can give you any other tree that you like. No, said the dragon, I like this tree. I'm staying put. Impossible said Luna, but if you apologise to the animals and if you choose another tree, you're welcome to stay with us and share this beautiful place. I won't be sharing. I will not be giving my tree back to you. It's now mine. Now take yourself off before I decide that roasted owl is on the menu for my dinner. I will give you until tomorrow, said Luna, and if you don't change your mind, Ha! said the dragon. Off you go. Luna flew away and the next day she returned. All the animals were gathered around the bottom of the tree as she flew up to speak to the dragon. Have you changed your mind? No, said the dragon. I've not changed my mind. I'm staying put. I like this tree. That's tough. You've left me no other choice. And Luna took to the sky above the dragon. The dragon was getting ready to attack, but Luna flew around and around the top of the tree until the dragon and the tree were covered in a cloud full of many colours. Once the tree was covered, there was an almighty crash of thunder and a bright flash of lightning. <coughs> Luna let out an almighty screech. Can you screech? Eee! All at once, the thunder and the lightning stopped. It's quite safe now, Luna assured the animals. And when they stepped forward, they saw the dragon was gone. And you know, ever since that day, dragons have not been seen in Calderstones Park. But if you go to look at the Allerton Oak in the middle of the park, you can see the damage the dragon did to that tree before Luna banished him for good. The and give yourselves a clap. Yay, well done. So the Allerton Oak is a real tree in the park around the corner from where I live in Liverpool. And it's actually the 
the um, tree of the year for Great Britain at the moment. So it's a very special tree indeed. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our lovely stories all about dragons. If you are going to celebrate St George's Day tomorrow, we hope you have a lovely, lovely time. Uh, we're back on Friday. And now on Friday, we've got some stories all about penguins because on Saturday, it's World Penguin Day. So we're going to have stories about penguins on Friday. And tomorrow on Jude Lennon, we're going to be reading our Glad to be Dan book, which is all about helping you if you're feeling a bit worried or a bit nervous about things at the moment. Right then, here we go, Lammy, let's get ready to sing our goodbye song. Come on, Dragon, you can come and join us. You've been very well behaved. Goodbye, everyone, nice to see you. Goodbye, everyone, nice to see you. Goodbye, everyone, nice to see you. Nice to see you today. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. If you know any friends who'd appreciate it, you can share this, the videos with them later. One will be up on YouTube, the other's on my Facebook Little Lamb Tales page. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe.